Hey everybody, this is Jim, and today I'm going to show you um, the enhanced forms function. So here I have a picture of the builder with a, just a new app that I just created called Form, and this is my um, default layout. So what I want to do is get rid of this uh, gallery section, because I don't want a gallery section for this form. Let me just go over here and click Delete to delete it, and it went away. And now I'm going to go add a section. Now we have two forms in my photo app now. We have the older forms, which are being sunset, so don't use those anymore. Come over here and use these brand new enhanced forms. Click on it, and I added here at the bottom the enhanced form section. So let me just move it up to where I want it, right underneath the logo. And as you can see in the form, all we have right now is a submit button. So let's go design our form. The way you do that is you go click on the settings for the form, and up comes the uh, enhanced form settings. The top part is what you normally see in multiple sections, just parameters around it. And the bottom part is our visual designer for the form, and here's where you enter parameters. And I'll show you how that works in a second, but let me just go over these options real quick. Um, the, the main one is the submit button. Right now it says submit form. If you want to change that to something else, like, uh, um, I don't know, submit SUBMIT application, I'll change the button to submit application. Once the form has been uh, submitted, you can do a success URL, which will take you off to either a web page or a page inside of an app. And if you click on the little eye, it'll give you information about it. And here's something that's new, that's interesting, is the email address. Typically when forms are submitted, they're sent to you directly. But if you create a form for somebody else, like an app for another business, you may want the email get to sent to them and not to you. And right here is where you can fill in the information of the alternate email address. So it won't if you fill in this email address, it, the form will no longer be sent to you. It'll be sent to wherever you're specifying here. Okay, so let's go build a form. So what we can do to build a form is we need to start adding fields to the form. And the way you add a field is you just click on this little plus sign. So I'm going to click on the plus and it'll add a field. And what we've got is a new field. This is the field that's the form. We're starting to build the form in this area here. And here's the content of the form or how, how the form should look like. So what it, by default it's an optional field that gets put in with the name new field one and it's, it's a text input. So here's our options that we can go down and change. So let me talk about the options real quick. The first option is the type of the field and in the enhanced forms we have a bunch of types. It can be either this, this text uh, line input, it could be a text box, it could be a check box, uh, radio buttons and so forth all the way down to an email and I'll talk about those in detail in a little bit. The next is the name of the field. Now the name of the field is not necessarily important to you unless you plan to download CSV files and if you do this is the title or the column heading that will be in the CSV file so that's what the name is. Typically you can just leave it alone or if you want to put it in there you can put something you want. The label is an optional field that will um, actually display on the field on the form so right here it says new field one now if you notice here I can change this let's say I want to what I'm going to do is have any other name so let me go over here and change this to your name and as you enter the stuff you can see it changing in the visual designer uh, a placeholder for a text line input is um, what goes in the prompt here as a little idea like first last or something like that and if you want to pre-fill in a value that's a real value that would actually get submitted if they didn't enter anything you could put enter that there so if you do that you'll see as a darker image John Doe and it, that's the the default but let me not put a default in here and if you want to put a uh, user help text on the form you can do that as well by typing in the text like please enter your first and last name and the final option on this uh, text input box is whether you want this field required or not. If you want it required, you click, you check it, and then it won't have the optional signify it's an optional, and the form will not submit unless they fill in a value. Or you can click it and 
lets them know that this is an optional field that they don't need to actually fill in. So for every type, so I've just added a field, that's great. All right, let me add another field. So you click over here and you click a plus. And now what you'll see is this comes down here and adds another field right here underneath it. And it lets me put an input value. And this is a different one than the one above. But if I click on the one above, just click on it, you'll see that it gives the values there so I can go edit it. Or if I want to edit field two, let me do that. So let's add some more options here. So some options we could in here is a text input box. And I'll show you what that looks like. It's a, it's a box where they can enter a lot of lines. And you can it has the same kind of input values as the previous field, but it also has the number of rows. So if I want the box to have more rows or less, I can type the number in there. So let's say I only want two rows. So I put two in there, and you see the box got smaller. Or I can make it a checkbox, and this is the new checkbox field. And as you see, as you change the type, sometimes these the, the input parameters change. So everything's the same except for this option down here. So on a checkbox, you want to add options. And the way you add options to your checkbox, you click Add Option. And then in here's your option value. So you, I can say like, uh, let's say my I'm going to ask favorite color. So I'm going to say green is an option. Add option red. Oops, I'm going to type red. And add option and blue. OK. So those, those are my colors. So let's actually put a label in here. So let's say favorite color. And I could put help text in as well. And let me do that real quick. Please enter your most favorite color. And here's my options. Now we have two, so we have several columns here. So let's talk about this. So the C. If you move over the C, it tells you what it is. Check this if you want this to check by default. So if I want by default in the form to default to blue, or since this is a checkbox, I can have more of them, more than one. So I can click it and make it green. But let's say I just uh, you can specify the value. Um, you enter the option value, or you lets the user specify their own value. And I'll show you how that works in a second. And if I want to get rid of one of these options, I just click on the trash can. So let me add, let me add a third option or fourth option. I mean. And let me put the word other here and make this user defined. So what this means, and I'll show you this in a little bit, is if they click on the other, what it'll do is then prompt them for a value. So they can specify any value they want. All right, let me uh, add another field. Let's make a nice little form here. Um, I can do a radio button. It's very similar to the checkbox, except for, you know, the radio buttons, you're going to select one, not all not uh, multiple values. I can put a drop down value and add some options. So let me add an option here like, uh, I don't know, um, city, and add the option country. And what I can do is I can specify by clicking on one of these which one I want to the default to show up. And this is, where do you live? Or let me pull it, let me change it to you live in question mark the city or the country. Okay, let me add a, a few more just show you what they look like. Um, markdown text output you can click on this and what you can do is this would be a text field that would be on the form to put instructions or whatever you want for a form. I won't go through that. Um, we have some other options called a net promoter score. This is an option that's 1 through 10, and basically this is used for survey kind of questions, like on a scale of 1 to 10, how much, how well do you like how we're doing for you, or something. Uh, we have the Likert scale. The Likert scale has um, a 1 through 5 value, and it's another one where you can say a statement, um, uh, does my photo app rock? Let me do that one. Does my... Oops, I'll just put MPA. MPA rock. And then they can put strongly agree, disagree, or uh, strongly, I'm sorry, just strongly disagree, disagree, neutral, agree, or strongly agree. Or I can change some other values. So this is agreement, how much they agree with the statement. Another one is satisfaction. Um, how, how well do you like uh, Cook Designer Portrait Studio? 
or how, how satisfied were you with um, your, their service or goodness? Um, how would you rate your last visit from previous visits? So you've got various scales that you can put in here. Uh, the last one is, or I'm sorry, two more. We've got the signature, which we had before, where people can enter a signature. You can either have it required or not. Put some help text and so forth. And the last is the email. The email input field is similar to a text input field, except for it does let you do two things. One is it verifies that, that what they're typing in does look like a real email address, and if it doesn't, it won't submit the form. And the other thing you can do is specify a reply to email address. You can click this little button, and what it will do is when a user enters their email address and the form is sent to you, it'll if you click reply on that form, it'll automatically go back to that user. It's, a, it's an easy way to send it back, you know, response, I got your form, everything's great, without actually have to type in their email address. So I hope that makes sense. Okay, so this is what a form looks like. I can add these things, so um, let me um, change the title since I changed this. Because you notice I, I was editing this field from change from one value to another, and it just changes it. So let me set uh, your email address and let's make this a required field how you definitely want to know how to contact them and let's go up here and edit this and make this a required field so now we have this little form set up fine now the other thing you can do with this form if you don't like the order of the form just click and drag it to where you want let's put this oops right there so it's your email name your I'm sorry your name your email address and so forth so that's what the form looks like we have some other buttons over here, and I'll show you in a second. So this is what the, the form looks like from a designer's point of view. Let's see how it looks like when you actually try and use it. And we have two little buttons over here. We have a, a, a working preview of a tablet. Now it's sort of working in the sense of it'll let you actually play with the form, but when you try and submit it, it won't actually submit it. And we have a working preview on a phone. So if you click on the tablet, you'll see it's a little bit wider. It's sort of like a tablet width. Now let me show you that option down here. When I click on the other, oh, so when I'm filling out the form, I can actually type in values. So like Jim Cook, uh, I like red, no, no, and I like another color. And I click other, you notice what happens. The other went away. Let me click and click it. It says other. I click it, it goes away, and please specify. So what other color do I like? Well, I like uh, purple. And then you got these other things you can enter, and you can click submit. And you look what happens here. It'll highlight in red the required fields that um, you didn't enter. So if I had this name up here, let me delete that. It didn't like that either. Okay, so we'll highlight it. And on when the form's actually submitted, it'll give an error message. In this case, it doesn't give you the error message, but it'll give you the person the error message telling them what's wrong, like enter a required field, or if I enter these values, Jim and xxx of course xxx is not a real valid name so let's submit and look it won't let it go until it says xxx at yy.com looks like a good email address it submits it and it would go through fine if i do the the phone preview click on it you'll see it's more narrow so you can see how it lines up these are just approximations and if i click on the trash can it'll delete all these fields if I just want to delete one field, I select on it and then click on the delete. So that's the form editor. Uh, if I don't like what I did, I can click X and it won't save it. Or I can click save and it will. And you can see the form is on here. So that's how the forms work. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, open a help ticket. Thanks.